Bratislava, capital city of the Slovak Republic, incorporates romantic charm, a vigorous cultural scene, a rare peek into different historical eras, and extraordinary landscapes. In addition to a wonderful high culture experience, Bratislava offers delightful shopping, excellent dining, and a vital nightlife. A succession of four- and five-star hotels have opened in the city over the past few years, and quality accommodation is now readily available. There are also more cheap options than ever before, with several backpacker hostels in the center of town. Located in the center of the city on Vezdoslavovo Square, the beautiful Bratislava Opera House makes a perfect setting for a grand evening of musical drama. This historic neo-Renaissance building was built in 1886 and now hosts top quality operatic productions at very reasonable prices. The traditional Bratislava Christmas market takes place at the main square in the old town, as well as in two adjacent squares between late November and Christmas. Bratislava's Old Town becomes a hub of activity with the splendid atmosphere of Christmas. There's genuine good cheer among the market, emanating from both the stall holders and the customers milling around them. The market consists of a small village of wooden cabins filling the main square, selling handmade traditional Slovak Christmas items, such as decorated spiced gingerbread biscuits, wooden toys, bells, latticework, wire jewelry, candles and pottery decorated with traditional Slovakian patterns. When it's food you're after, the choices are many, varied, and usually very delicious. Mouth-watering savory snacks, such as goose pastries, Christmas cabbage soup with homemade sausage are sold in abundance, as well as sweet treats including waffles, honey cakes, and ginger biscuits. You can also get a good drink of hot mulled wine, honey wine, or Christmas punch, which can be very useful to keep warm in the chilly Slovak winter. The main square is also charming during the summer season, when it is in full outdoor cafe seating, trees in bloom, and the steady trickle of the splendid Roland fountain found at its center. There's no better place to take a seat, have some coffee, and enjoy the unique atmosphere of the old town. of the world's greatest rivers, the Danube, flows from the Black Forest in Germany through most of the countries of Central Europe, on its way to the Black Sea. Several bridges cross the Bratislava section of the Danube, the newest of which is the Apollo Bridge, a remarkable structure which was opened to the public only recently in the year 2005. Its curved lines, inclined arches, and virtual absence of right angles make the shape of the bridge very sophisticated and a prime example of modern architecture. The Apollo Bridge can be crossed by foot, but it's not very close to any attractions, so it may be best to admire it from afar. Most people use the new bridge, which passes between the Cathedral of St. Martins and the Bratislava Castle, and has a separate level for pedestrians. An outstanding feature of the city, the massive Bratislava Castle stands on the rather isolated rocky hill of the Little Carpathians, directly in the middle of the city. Situated about 85 meters above the Danube River, the castle offers a stunning view of the old town and the river itself. Bratislava Castle is often referred to as the upturned table, due to its four octagonal corner towers. The castle is currently closed for major renovations and will hopefully be reopened by 2012. Parts of the compound remain open to the public throughout the renovations. The Castle Hill site has been inhabited since the transition period between the Stone and Bronze Ages and has been the Acropolis of a Celtic town and of a huge Slavic fortified settlement. It has also served as a political, military, and religious center for Great Moravia. A stone castle was not constructed here until the 10th century, when the area became part of the Kingdom of Hungary. The castle was converted into a Gothic anti-Hussite fortress under King Sigismund's reign of Luxembourg in 1430, then became a Renaissance castle in 1562, and again rebuilt in 1649 in the Baroque style. Under Queen Maria Theresa, the castle became a prestigious royal seat. In 1811, the castle was inadvertently destroyed by fire, 
and laid in ruins until the 1950s, when it was rebuilt mostly in its former Theresian style. The castle's long and eventful history has created a very eclectic assembly of structures and courtyards in different architectural styles of different eras, and presents a fascinating display of the past. Similar to many other cities in Europe, the Holocaust brought ruin to the Jewish community of Bratislava. Of the 100,000 Jewish inhabitants of Slovakia, only 30,000 survived World War II. The main Slovak Holocaust Memorial is located on the site of the former Nailog Synagogue, which was demolished in 1967. The memorial consists of two parts. The first is the central sculpture with a non-figurative motif and a David shield on the top. It is placed on a black granite platform with the word Zachor, meaning remember, inscribed on it. The second part of the memorial is the black wall, displaying a silhouette of the destroyed synagogue. After you get to Bratislava and check in at one of the hotels or apartments, you can take a stroll around Corzo the historical center of the city, and the pedestrian-only zone. The old town is quite cozy, and you can easily cross it by walking in 10 minutes. Of course, once you get there, it will take you much longer, seeing that you'll want to spend time and enjoy the historical architecture of this little big city, and perhaps meet some of the local folks. Stop in at one of the numerous cafes or restaurants for a coffee or a drink and soak up the unique atmosphere of Bratislava. If you need to travel outside the center, use the trams or trolley buses. They will get you from one point to another quickly and efficiently. Bratislava, like the rest of Slovakia, is predominantly Catholic, with about 60% of the population declaring to belong to the faith. In keeping with its German heritage, the city is also strongly influenced by the Lutheran Church. Bratislava's many churches are a fine example of Renaissance and Baroque architecture, and many guided tours are available to take specifically through the religious sites of the city. Aside from its lovely Christmas fair, Bratislava hosts several interesting festivals throughout the year, which are very much worth a visit. One of the city's most celebrated events is the Bratislava Music Festival, with foreign and local masters and composers performing at what is considered a walkthrough of the nation's classic culture in forms of orchestra, ballet, opera, and symphony productions. It's hard to believe that the capital of Slovakia hasn't been Slovak for very long. Officially, Bratislava came into existence only in 1919, for 700 years preceding, it was known as the Austrian Pressburg, or Hungarian Bosoni, and the population had a very international flair. In the 20th century, Bratislava was occupied by the Nazis during World War II, to subsequently become the official capital of the Slovak Socialist Republic. It was in 1989 that the communist regime was overthrown, and Bratislava took its place as we know it today the capital of Czechoslovak Federative Republic. Bratislava's rich history can be thoroughly explored with its many museums and galleries, exhibiting anything from natural history through historical artifacts, and of course, different arts, including paintings, drawings, jewelry, glass, ceramics, crafts, photography, and design. 
after experiencing the cultural aspects of the city, you can also do some great shopping in Bratislava. One of the best ways to shop in the city is in one of its traditional markets. These make great places to experience the local lifestyle while browsing through some of the local goods. Farmers come from rural areas, delivering the freshest produce you can ask for. As well as food, the markets sell beer, wine, clothing, and handicrafts. Keep a lookout for traditional wooden toys and dolls, ceramics, glassware, and traditional clothing. A number of souvenir shops are also located in the city center, within easy reach of many of the Bureau de Change. The city center has been referred to as one huge restaurant, as there are hundreds of restaurants, cafes, and bars in the pedestrian zone alone. A traditional Slovak dinner should start and sometimes also end with a Slovak aperitif. Have a shot of Borovica, the traditional juniper brandy. As for the soup, try a kapusnica, the heavy cabbage soup with pieces of smoked sausage and mushrooms. For the main course, go for the brinzove haluski, considered to be the Slovak national meal. They are gnocchi-style potato dumplings, topped with cheap cheese and pieces of fried bacon. Also, don't forget to try some of the excellent wines from Southern Slovakia. Although Bratislava was never the most famous city in the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, for almost 300 years it was the most important one. After Turkish forces conquered Hungary in the 16th century, Bratislava, or Pressburg as it was called at the time, became the capital of the empire. As such, it hosted the coronation masses for the rulers of the kingdom. From 1563 to 1830, a total of 19 coronations for monarchs and royal consorts took place in the city. Today, there are no kings and queens in Slovakia, but Bratislava has revived this tradition with its annual Bratislava Coronation Festival, held on the first weekend of September. newest capitals, yet an ancient and important city to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Slovakia's Bratislava is a city of blended cultures where four languages prevail on the streets and the cuisines of half of Europe seem to mingle in the happy mishmash of the city center restaurants. Full of joy and with a touch of mischief, Bratislava is a celebration for the mind and the senses, a place to satisfy any appetite. <laughs>